Just breathe deeply. And allow the magnificent light from the great central sun to fill your being. Feel that peace, that joy, and feel how beautifully grounded you are in this energy. This is not something that's new to you. You are this energy. And anchor it in to the center of the earth. Breathe deeply, allow that breath of God, that life force to activate even deeper, even fuller who you are. Feel it, know it. Allow your heart to open. Allow your, the, the high heart, the da'at to open. Allow the chakra of divine will to open letting in more light and feel and allow the iridescent rainbow lights to fill you touching the DNA activating the virtual strands even more even more even more gently ease and grace perfect for each one of you allowing you to step even further into your perfection or to step further into the knowledge of your perfection the divine wisdom of your perfection now move into your heart space And feel the golden light, this ball of beautiful golden energy, gathering momentum in your heart, your heart energy of love. And feel that. Know it is your truth and feel that. we ask that you send that love, that golden pure love that divine love out first to the headwaters of the Sacramento River which is in this area send that love right from the headwaters from the beautiful stones where the tiny little trinkle the tiny little drips of water go down the ferns and the greenery down the rocks and create a tiny little stream and watch that stream as it gathers momentum filled with your love and the iridescent golden light and as that stream gets bigger and richer and fuller see your love expanding through it and allow that river to continue out And now let's move to the rivers of the planet, all the rivers, all the streams that move into the rivers, the tributaries, and send that golden light from your heart into the rivers. And see the words love and thankfulness and gratitude go out. But more importantly, feel those feelings and send the feelings out. and the oceans, the great oceans. See the cetaceans, feel your light, hear your light, feel your love, see their joy as they take those ribbons of golden pure love and swim the ley lines of the planet. And 
feel within your blood, within the bloodstream of your body, this love moving into your rivers and streams and tributaries. Fill your body with love and then again from the heart out to the planet. When we leave today, I ask if you can take one thing with you. Take this with you. Bring together two or more. And send this love out. Send the love out. This is done with ease and grace and from the deepest, fullest love of your being. And know who you are. Makes the difference. Partnering and harmonizing with Gaia. And so it is. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, thank you. I thought maybe you'd all fall in so deeply into meditation that we'd not be able to find your way back. God bless to every one of you. I've come to make a wee statement to you. First of all, the honoredness that I have to be sitting in the presence of the great Tryon. And what a blessing that is. Yet you've not come here to hear me praise the likes of him because you already know the energy power that exists within. What you have come here hopefully for is to hear a message. And so message I shall give you. And because the beautiful John has so eloquently placed your mind in such a beautiful estate, a place that should allow you to be able to feel what I'm about to say. For most of you will come to a great knowing here very soon in your life. There's two types of energies that are going to cross your path. One of them is going to be called the I think it's right. And the other one's going to be called the I know. Not I know it's right, just I know. But for those of you that are still confused between the I think it's so in the I know. Let me help you. There's a story and it goes in, this, in the most beautiful manner of a young man that set about wishing and hoping for all the beauty in life to become in his way. And one day he found himself standing before a doorway. And he looked at the door and it was a crack open. So he figured he'd walk inside. And as he walked inside, there was a beautiful voice said to him, it said, here, here is the, the riches that you've searched for so long. 
And oh, this young man, he thought, what a grand thing this is. I've heard the voice. This must be that I know that the guides speak of. I think it's so. And he walked into the door, and as he did, the door slammed shut behind him. Being a little bit afraid, he reached quickly for the doorknob, and the door was gone. So, oh my goodness, he looked about the room, but he couldn't see a thing. He kept looking, and he couldn't see. And then finally, after a short period of stumbling through the dark, he began to see something, just a little bit of something. And so he began to search for another door. And as he looked, he couldn't see the door, but he kept fumbling his way through the semi-darkness. And he kept saying, I think it's so, the door has got to be right on the other wall there. And sure enough, he kept getting more and more of a vision. And to finally, off to the side, he could see what it looked like. Maybe a coffee table or a couch or something. But he knew that wasn't a door. And there was something laying over in the corner. And he knew that wasn't the door. But he kept his vision getting brighter. And finally he came to the idea. He said, I think it's so the door is right there. And he reached out and he felt it. Sure enough, there was a door knob. And he got a hold of that doorknob and he twisted it. And he said, there, I think I know. And he went through that doorway. And lo and behold, it slammed again. He turned about and again, no doorway. A bit frustrated he was. So he sat down where he was, right where that doorway was. And he said, you know, there's supposed to be guidance out here. Talk to me now, guidance. Tell me, what am I doing in the second room? I don't even know what was in the first room. Here I'm in the second room and there's nothing that I can see. And guidance of all of its wisdom, my friends, it lit a little light way deep inside of him. And it was so he could peer out into the room. And what did he see? Oh, he was so magically happy because there was doors all over the wall. Oh, he was happy with the doors. He was so happy, he jumped to his feet and he said, Thank you, guidance, I've got it. I think I know which door to take. And he ran towards the door at about halfway, guidance in its infinite wisdom. Set a little bar right in front of his foot, kaboom, down he went, flat on his little nose. And as he sat up, he looked around, and sure enough, the room was still empty. Except there was this beautiful light sitting over in the corner. Don't be mad with me, Crayon. But there was a little light sitting over in the wee corner. And he looked at that light and he said, What am I doing? I just want to get to the doors and get to the next room. And this little light said to him, I want to show you something. And the man said, Well, well, show me, but hurry up because I want to get to the door. And so right before the man's eyes became a vision. And guess what it was a vision of? It was a vision of the room that he was just in. The one he'd left so hurriedly. And there was the couch. And there was the coffee table. And over in the corner was a stack of gold bullion about seven feet high. More money than this man could spend in lifetime. And so he says to the light, he says, can you get me back? Show me where the door is. And the light said to him, I think it's time that you find your own door. And oh, this man, he was not happy. He said, he said, you know, that's all I get from your guides. Go find it yourself. They always say to me, how about just one time you show it to me? And Cryon said, I showed you the first door. You didn't look beyond it, my friend. You was in too big a hurry to see the truth of it all. And so as I said to you, I'm not here to toot on the horn of Cryon. I'm here to say that Cryon is like any other of the beauty of the world that we come from. We're here to show you how to get where you want to go, but darned if we can pick you up and carry you. We're not built like that. That's why we got mediums. They do the carrying. 
we do the hoping hoping that one day you'll not be saying I think this is the dark hoping that one day you'll be just a little bit more patient with the world of the guidance and you'll give your own eyeballs a chance to focus and maybe one day you'll stop tripping over the gold that you're searching for because you're looking so far out in front of you they can't see what's in your hands and maybe maybe you put your arms around your loved ones and you'll say how about four eyes is better than two how about we walk side by side and you know what maybe then your kids will put their arms around you and then their kids will put their arms around them and all of a sudden you won't need your eyes because you'll know you found the gold it's in your heart you can't find it in the corner you only find it in your heart and you know what Carol would say to you then don't you look with everything that you got let a little tear wash out your eyeball and stop being so darn ashamed of it and when you see the next time you won't think you won't question you'll know and by God my friends me and the beautiful crayon and all the rest Oh, yes, even that petite, lovely little Miss Gaia, who we love so dearly. We'll get to rest. We'll go find another earth that needs us just as bad as you do. For now, don't need us anymore. For now, be us. Let your eyes open to the gold of your heart and you'll never walk alone again. I turn it over to my good friend, the masterful Cryon. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. We know where we are. I know the medium who I sit next to. I know of the love of God, and I continue this message with you, and where is the door to your heart and what is it that makes it so magical that we would direct you in this fashion is co-creation part of your reality look at the co-creation at this moment that has brought you here in this moment to observe something so seldom for what you hear this day is not master Kiriel and master Kryon it is a combined consciousness of the two of us giving one message for what master Kiriel has said is part of the quantum consciousness and I continue it and I say to you this door the one that we have described so eloquently so far together is the master door. The door of love. Let's talk about that family and those hugs for a moment. Did you ever think of them as your resource? And so many of you say, no, they are the stone around my neck. all of these things you don't think of them perhaps as the key to the door do you when's the last time you thought to yourself I'm going to flood myself with so much light that I'm going to make these fall in love with me again they won't be able to help themselves because I'm going to have the master upon me 
I'm going to activate the layers of my DNA to such a degree that they're going to see me in an entirely different light. I'm going to apply the love of God to my life. I'm going to co-create it because I'm in the room of my own making. That's where the abundance is. You keep looking for the doors. You want to go into the other rooms, just like we said. And you don't want to look around your own, do you? Is it too ordinary? What is it that makes you want to escape it all the time? Why is it you cannot see the gold in the corner? Abundance. Let us define abundance one more time. Abundance is your sustenance every day of your life. It's not a number. It's not, it's not a pile so big you can't imagine it. It's sustenance every moment you need it. Do you need peace? It's, it's gold-bladed, you know. Peace is gold-bladed. It's abundant. How many of you like peace tonight? You need health? It's all in that pile of abundance. More than you can spend in a lifetime, you know. That's your co-creative ability we talk about. When you begin to look inside, that's where the mastery is. That's where the gold is. That's where the treasure is. It's always been that way. You want to play a game. You want to look around the other rooms. And perhaps this little parable that we've already started for you ought to give you some information. If you look too far, you might lose the first room. That's free choice. Let me tell you about co-creation. You see who's sitting in front of you here? You think that's an accident? We've said these things before. For the two mediums in their human form meet each other as man and man. Meeting of the heart. And the years go by and they meet each other yet again in another situation, another circumstance, and they have another meeting in the heart. From totally and completely different backgrounds, channeling totally, completely different entities, they see in each other the brothers that they are. And some of you would say, what a coincidence. Here they are bringing you one message. After all these years sitting side by side in a unity, let me tell you, my friends, this is the new energy. There was a time when one would go one direction and the other would go the other direction and they would say, well, I certainly hope he doesn't take my stuff. (laughs) I've got messages and I don't want him take it up. I'm going to distance myself from him. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to compete with him. And then he'll have his people. And I'll have my people. And he'll have his writings. And I'll have my writings. Well, I want you to take a good look. This is the new energy. If you had any question about it, we've got one message in unity. And it's not about his people and my people. It's about people. We the people. That's our message. Co-creation is like that. You have any idea how complex it is? All those years ago, something set in motion. The medium you would call Fred and the medium you would call Lee all had guides and angels around them all celebrating all working together to create a moment like that you know how complex that is master Cariel gave you an eloquent explanation of what we have described as the quantum hologram of consciousness today he did that beautiful that's complex squared upon itself many times the 
the kind of complexity that you cannot fathom mathematically goes into even the simplest co-creative act. We have mentioned this before. Have you ever heard of the parking angel? <laughs> Obviously you have. <laughs> what do you think is involved in something as simple as that? You're in your vehicle and you're going around the block. Parking angel, please help me. I've got to get to my appointment. My appointment consists of a pair of shoes. <laughs> you don't think we've been watching, do you? <laughs> and they're right over there in that shop right there. Parking Angel, please help me get, I want to get close. So I don't have to walk very far. So I won't wear out the shoes I have on. Before I get to the ones that I would really like to have. And suddenly, like a miracle, out pulls the vehicle in front of the shoe store. And in your car goes, and you say, thank you, parking angel. And you get out, and you fulfill your appointment with the shoes. <laughs> now, what did you just think happened? We bring you the simplest of co-creations, the easiest, perhaps the most fun, so you can truly understand. You know how complex that was? Maybe some of you don't. <laughs> Maybe some of you have the idea that because you're enlightened, your energy of light can then steamroll over anybody. <laughs> and your parking angel has a responsibility to go into a store and find some poor soul. <laughs> Grab them by their outfit and pull them out. Toss them in their car and make them pull out. Because you've got light and they don't. <laughs> that's not complicated, that's human. <laughs> no, I'll give you another concept. What if the one who pulled out did so at the right time, at the right moment, after they had found their appointment and they were finished, perfectly timed? What if they were saying to themselves, I'm an enlightened being, you know, I would love to give my parking space to another lighthouse like me. Could you arrange that, parking angel, so I can give a gift today to somebody who is really deserving it? How about that one? I'm going to pull out now, and I'm going to trust Spirit for you to have somebody lined up to take this space who really wants it. And here I go. What if your co-creation is someone else's co-creation? Do you know the complexity of that, the timing of that? Well, that's child's play compared to what you see here on stage before you. We've got a message. You want to know about co-creation? You want to know about the love of God? You want to know about the room that you're in and the door that you're, you're opening? We'll call it a Lemurian door today. Only one room big with the treasures of a lifetime surging through your DNA. Surging through your DNA, the love of God. Mr. 
And if you can imagine, my friends, going from the parking angels to stepping into the beauty of the co-creation of the DNA of all life, the DNA of the tree, the DNA of the blade of grass, the DNA of the whale, the DNA of the Palladian. Oh, you see, they got DNA, isn't it, Mr. Q? Yeah, about 18 strands of them. But you see, we came here in unified force today. And before I finish up my talk, I want to say this to you. If you'll forgive us just a moment, I need to talk to Cryon. And I'm going to say to you, Crayon, I want you to talk to your medium. I'm going to talk to mine. And we're going out on the oceans over there in Lemuria. And when we go out there, I don't care who all comes along, but I want to sit down just you and me and have a conversation, just back and forth like the old times. And they can all sit around and listen if they'd like. And we'll talk of worlds that have been and have yet to come. And if they want to hear us, I think they'd enjoy themselves. But we'll do that out on the waters if your medium will go along with it. But to finish up my part here this day and to stay with the co-creation, listen to what I'm about to say to you. Because you see, when you step through the door that Cryon so eloquently pointed you to, and you didn't even know you was being pointed because you knew if Cryon was saying it, it had to be right. But do you know what makes up Cryon? Do you know what makes up Kill? The love in your heart makes us up. You see, we couldn't be here without you. And when you step through the door, we step through with you. Oh, you'd think maybe we'd cry when we see it, not get it right, but we don't. We celebrate every move that you make. And you say, Kill, do you celebrate when we fall flat in the mud puddle? And we say, Absolutely. Because the mud's going to break your fall instead of cement. You say, Master Kill, can you celebrate when our car runs out of the gas because we was too dumb to fill up the tank at the last gas station? We say, heck yes, because down the road, there was a landslide that fell on every other car but yours. Of course, when you show us love, we show it back to you. Oh, don't you know? They look at us as though we're great and filled with wisdom. And you know what? I think we are. <laughs> but you know how we got there? Searching for the damn door that you was just found. That's how we got to be able to sit in the places that we sit. And that's how we won the favor of the same creator that you're searching for right now. So I ended up this way, my friends. Stop searching for the creator. In your heart, it'll dance for you, it'll sing to you, it'll give you the answer you seek. And then, my friends, all of that that you have been searching for for so ever long will be in that door you opened. And not only will it be there, there'll be so much of it that you want to give it away. Do you remember what Cryon just said? Said it isn't a matter how high you stack it, how much you're counting. It's the beauty of sharing it. You don't give it away for God's sakes. You earned it to get it. But you share it in another way. You pass these words on, the special words. That when you study with your creator, when you ask Cryon for an answer, 
When you ask me, or your God self you ask, there's always these words that haunt you for some reason. And one day, you stand before your most beautiful wisdom, the selfness of you being God. You look into these particles of shining light. And you know that you've just co-created because looking back at you, I am. Do you get it? God bless you, my friends. Let cry on lead us from here. My good friend, Master Curiel, my brother, we have seen so much. I ask you to remain and do not go back to your medium just yet. Remain with me here, my brother. The time that you seek where we would go back and forth and speak of these times of earths before this, of incarnations that we have shared in other places will be accomplished in a piece of Lemuria that never sunk called Hawaii and we will do that soon my brother we share the love of God the two of us we are a duel today with one consciousness bringing you one message that's as old as you are Laborian. These Lemurians that have joined you in an interdimensional state have been here all these days. They knew when you made your reservation, when you gave intent to come, and here you are. The one that walks in the door having no idea what this was about. Do you now know? Do you understand what we are saying about discovery of self? The ones who have come and returned over and over. Do you know what we're saying? We're giving you a message that we have given since we arrived on the planet. In an energy that would let you hear it. Master Curiel said something today that we have echoed many times even in myself and my partner and that is the Gaia clock will tick and bring the new energy of the renaissance of the shift whether you're here or not. It was always that way. And yes, there was indeed the potential that you would not have been here. And the new energy would have arrived on time, on schedule. And it would have seen only the plants and the animals that remained of what some have called a great test a beautiful experiment well that didn't happen and it's not going to because you chose to stay and at that point you chose to stay there was a man named Fred Sterling and a man named Lee Carroll who were awakened they begin to channel the entities that would speak of this shift. They would never have been awakened without the humanity and the Lemurians in this room having done what they did. Now think of this co-creation for a moment. A Lemurian 50,000 years ago looks into the wisdom of the quantum hologram and sees the potential of the consciousness squared of this day by this mountain with you sitting in the chair and I know your name Master Curiel knows your name because you're part of that quantum hologram and you always were and the potentials that you would sit in the chair have been manifest and there was no Armageddon 
and instead there will be a shift lighthouse and you're ready for it do not fear the love of God some of you will take a message from here and you'll say well I've only heard the scary parts <laughs> there's going to be problems and there may be some termination there there may be difficulties and challenges and that's really all you heard do not fear the love of God because of time <laughs> see Ryan speaks a little German. <laughs> we would like to instate, instigate a new program. Take a Lemurian home. <laughs> there are enough to go around, you know. And here's the beauty of it. The Lemurian won't even know that they've gone anywhere. <laughs> They're part of an interdimensional scene that has no distance and no time. But you know what they do have? They're part of your consciousness. They have the awareness. They have the wisdom. And they have your ancestry. And they share your DNA. Could it be that in this room you share a DNA layer, a kosh, with an interdimensional being from the mountain? What a concept. What if one of them is you? Uh oh. Brian, you're talking about being two places at the same time. You're talking about dimensional shift. How could I be here as a Lemurian in an interdimensional form and also have that in my Akashic record in past lifetime? <laughs> I want you to get used to this. <laughs> There's a lot of it going on right here. And that's what's speaking to you. What if you were your own guide? What if you've opened the door to your higher self and it wants you to look at something that's out of time and out of space and it's beautiful? Are you ready? Would you like that? Master Kirill, would you allow me to join hands with you? A light just went on. In the universe. This has not happened before. And the power in this room has exponentially been increased. And we're going to activate layers of DNA with your permission. And all of those of you who wish it, you give intent by yourself quietly now. It's a quiet time. It's a personal time. And if you're ready, I want you to think of the six. The Lemurian activation, the six. Let the power flow into this place for the Lemurians are joining their hands and yours. And the Akash is being activated. told you that the sixth layer of DNA was prayer and communication. Let us now link it to number nine, which is that of healing. So what we will have is prayer and communication of the six in completion with the healing you came for. If we were to activate these within you right now, you'll take a Lemurian home. And it's going to be you. <laughs> Full discovery and recognition and the beginning of a master. And you'll no longer compartmentalize these things or count heads. 
when it comes to who is who because the master doesn't do that the master knows the quantum hologram is it everyone together I speak in circles but your DNA is feeling it let this energy pour into you at this moment and the two of us give a dedication this is the new energy this is the unity that will create through the great shift a peaceful planet it is what we see together it is what we have said together it is the facilitation that we teach together and it's yours let those Lemurians in this room be on notice that the energy has shifted in this place let the shift carry over into this city which will receive great shift along with the one slightly to the south called Shasta let it be known that a portal has been opened this day through the energy of Master Cariel and Cryon and those Lemurians who would join us with a new activated DNA let this portal be a crack that begins to open wide and create the reason the Lemurians came and this is why you're here go home differently than you came this wasn't just an experience. Let the love of God pour in you. Let the wisdom of the divine feminine be yours. And let you remember this day for the rest of your life. For there'll come a day when we will both greet you on the other side of the veil and say, remember, took each other's hands and doubled the power. Two brothers celebrating the love of God. Celebrating the love of God. 